Hey there, readers and storytellers, and thank you for joining me on another episode of Story Unfolding, a show about changing the world through creativity, ingenuity, and intellectual discourse. We share meaningful conversations with creators, creatives, and dreamers who take it upon themselves to make a difference in the world. We have an influence on the world around us, regardless of our intent. The only way forward is by confronting the hard truths, asking the tough questions, and letting your voice be heard. We are better together each day with our human story unfolding. Now, I am pleased to have Jeff Kippel and Mindy Blackstein on with me today. Jeff is the first returning guest on this show, so thank you so much for coming. I'm super excited to get into this. Um, That's awesome. Let, let me do, I'll give you a quick intro and then I'll open up the floor for you guys. Uh, Jeff and Mindy helped pioneer and launch the natural bodybuilding and fitness model movement. They created events, expos, magazines, television shows, and seminars around the world. They inspired millions to take massive personal action and transform into the visual representation of their own superhero. Beyond that, they write awesome books, laugh out loud comedies. You can see behind me this amazing uh, cover. Uh, the Ridiculous Adventures of Sermon Ann. I think you've had book one out, book two through nine is in the works, I believe. It is. Awesome. So that I will I will open the floor for you guys. How about you tell us, tell our audience a little bit about you. Thank you so much. So uh, you did a great job. Uh, Mindy and I have been in the uh, fitness, wellness, and empowerment space uh, for uh, two decades now. And uh, our goal was to provide a platform for people to showcase their ability to step into their superhero, step up onto a stage, show that to audiences around the world and inspire people to also take good for me action steps. What we found along the way is that the focus, and it's just how it was, uh, was on the outward appearance of the body. And, uh, people forgot about the inside, the mental, the emotional, the social, the functional health, right? That's what we, we found, that's what we discovered, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so just because people look like a superhero doesn't mean that they feel like a superhero or are really healthful in, in all aspects of it. So we, we decided that we're going to uh, provide an opportunity to help guide people on that pathway, on how they can really love better, how they think, feel, act, look, and dream. That's amazing. So, <laughs> do you want to add anything to that? Um, so we took that, the knowledge that we had previously from the fitness industry, and we saw what worked and what didn't work. And then we spent years studying empowerment techniques and mindset and a whole bunch of different modalities. Uh, we spent many years getting certified in different areas. And then our whole point of that is that we actually want people that if they're going to want to look like a superhero, they should also feel like a superhero. And then those people who actually feel like a superhero, who have the right mindset, they're happy, they're healthful, they're confident, they're fulfilled, that then they're the visual representation of the superhero, which they originally wanted so that other people can ask them questions and learn from them so that they too could be empowered to love better how they think, feel, function, look, and even dream. So what we did is we, uh, so I had started writing this book, The Ridiculous Adventures of Serving Anne in my teens, uh, you know, as an extension of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you know, my, my own world with it. But we came, I kept coming going back to the book over our career and over the last few years, really dove in to embed that book with more messages of self-growth and self-love. It was actually Mindy's idea to do that. And let's use comedy as the way to uh, spread that message. You know, it's a lot easier to uh, be able to get people to understand something or have a shift if there's a, a humorous way around it. It gets people to, to pause, you know, and then rethink the way that they were looking at things before. And that's what we did. And in fact, over the last uh, six months or so, we uh, really, really took our education level, uh, you know, a uh, further step deeper. We got ourselves immersed in a, a certification called the Whole uh, Code Certification, which took an understanding is 
like maybe we had 60% of the information and the other 40% was missing. Well, now we've learned a good chunk of that other 40%. And what we did is we rewrote book one and re-edited it to put in even deeper messages of self-growth, self-love, and then, then with more laugh out loud moments of that. And then uh, almost have completed book two as well. So book one is relaunched right now uh, with new content and uh, new messages, you know, contained within it. We, we were very uh, strategic in inserting the messages in such a way that if the person was open to that lesson or that learning, great, they, they've got that, they'll, they'll notice it. And if not, it would just come across as another fun joke or a fun story. That's awesome. That's really cool. I, I didn't know that you were relaunching me. I saw a lot of stuff about your new cover and everything, and I absolutely love the cover. Um, but that's amazing that you relaunched it. So what prompted you to make that decision to actually relaunch it and, you know, add those messages in? You know, the things that we uh, were learning over the last number of months were lessons that we felt that has to be in there. Like we, we shared it only to a certain degree and we can go a bit deeper. So let's go deeper with it. Uh, and what prompted the, the change was originally Mindy was the content, or what, what do we call it? The, the development, development, editor. development editor of the book. No, originally Mindy was a wife and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and then, uh, then Mindy started to really help me with getting the book finished for its launch and became the development editor. And she did such a great job with it. And then we realized that there were, you're welcome. <laughs> and then we realized that there were more messages that we can do where we can refine it differently. So Mindy sort of took on the role of let's go back into it. Let's go through it from, from the first word until the last word. And now we were now co-authors in the book. Uh, and uh, I think what we've come out at the end now is, is completely, is not completely different, but it's on a different level uh, and uh, really, really happy about it. That's amazing. That's really cool. And now what about the process of you two writing together? So I, I know you two seem like you're in a great relationship. Everything's wonderful. Uh, but you, this was a passion project for you since you were teens. Now you have your wife coming in and helping you change your story. Like, how was that dynamic? Did y'all have trouble with it at all? Well, I was very resistant to it for a long time. <laughs> Just because, yeah. because he, he started when he was a teen, so he didn't have any of those concepts in his mind at that time. Yeah, so to me it was, well, how can we put messages of self-growth and self-love? And it's just a fun <laughs> comedy book. Like, forget that. Uh, uh, so it took some, some time to get there. But once I accepted it, I think uh, it, it worked very naturally because... Uh, the way that we work is I'm, I'm writing, I'm letting the download come out, uh, I'm putting it together, and then Mindy comes in behind and then adds her expertise and brilliance into it and makes it, you know, that much more succinct and makes sure that the story is actually flowing, that even though we're putting the messages in, that it still works for the story, it still flows, the jokes are still good, they still come across the way that we wanted to. Now, have you always been funny? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> you know, what, what's uh, cool is that uh, a lot of stories within the book are actual stories that happened like when I was a teen, you know, stuff that I did together with my friends. And, you know, you, you write about what you know about, right? So there's a lot of fun stories. So I guess I must have been funny because <laughs> I did both things. <laughs> so uh, you're doing it's going to be like a big series right so books two through nine you're working on yeah so book two is almost finished now it's got one more chapter left and we've mapped out where we want to go because each book is going to have a primary focus on some key messages and it gives us the ability to have each of the characters be able to be the, the lead star in different books bring them together, bring the ones that are, uh, you know, developing the relationships and also putting this out to uh, the readers, you know, letting the readers give us some uh, feedback on what they like with the story, which messages they, they really resonate with, which characters they resonate with. 
Uh, we're going to do all kinds of contests from uh, people coming up with the theme songs for the audiobook to uh, the graphics of what some of the characters would look like or cool story ideas and embed them within. So it gives us a lot of leeway. We've planned the books out on very, very general basis. Uh, the way that I have always written has just been based on the download. Like I'm learning the story as the story is getting written on the on the screen. So we know some key concepts, but the rest of it will be the story as we learn as it comes out. So why did you go and rework book one as opposed to just putting in these deeper messages in book two? Uh, we did put a lot of messages in book two, and we wanted some of the messaging from book one to carry through properly into book two. We uh, Some of the things that we learned, we thought, oh, you know, we can do a bit better than that. We can explain it a bit better, or we can do it in such a way that if somebody reads it, they can have an aha that they could put into action right away, and they could make changes in their life. So in fact, even from book one in the rewrite, we have sort of that challenge out to the readers. You know, if you have an aha, if you've rethunk something differently, because, you know, we've got two key characters in the book that are the two main characters, Serbanan, which is this fun, you know, adventure alien from the planet Placelner, and we have a teenage boy from this Earth school, uh, and they switch bodies. So what the premise behind that is they're experiencing their worlds like with brand new eyes they're seeing things differently like here on earth you know everything from a blade of grass to gravity to trees to just everything that's going on so we've done it in such a way that people can take action steps and they could share their story their experiences they can win prizes they could win opportunities to make an appearance in one of the the future books so we thought since book two has gone even that deeper on the messaging, let's go back to book one. Let's make sure that it, it has flowed properly, that we put everything in uh, that's going to give the reader the best experience possible. That's really awesome. I love the way you did that. Um, that made me start thinking, in terms of your ability to kind of observe the world from a different perspective, like how did you get yourself to be able to write in that kind of like eyes wide open way? Kind of and the way it sounds like you're describing it is like kind of the perspective of a child, you know, seeing things for the first time. Yet you've had all this lived experience. So how did you kind of remove that a little bit and put in that refreshing take? You know, it's it's about uh, imagination. And if you break everything down, everything starts from imagination. How we experience our world, how we experience our day to day, uh, how we feel, how we think is based on what we're thinking. You know, thoughts create things. So even though we were in the fitness industry, uh, we, we really realized that it's so much more than this, this physical meat suit that we have. There's so much more to it. And not, not enough people are talking about that. So let's talk about that. Let's get people to rethink fitness, to rethink life. And uh, then that was like our main business project while the book has been always a passion project. And we said, well, why don't we just merge these things together? Let's communicate this message of health and wellness and how people could just be happy. You know, uh, choosing the, co the category of comedy, when you really laugh, like I'm not just, <laughs> like really <laughs> laugh, you're in the moment, right? You're in the moment on a physiological basis, you're releasing all these amazing chemicals endorphins and serotonin and uh, dopamine, uh, all these things that make you feel good. In fact, when you're laughing, you're actually even massaging all your internal organs. Like there's all these amazing things that happen. But what it does is it gets you to pause. And if people could pause long enough to actually get the message or rethink something in a different way, they're gonna feel better on an ongoing basis. So it was just, how do we bring these all together? Well, let's just take everything that we do and bring it into one. Let's deliver the message to the book. The book becomes the opening. If people want to expand more, they can take different courses and certifications. They can go to workshops. They can go to seminars. They can listen to some of our other content. But let's get people excited through the book end. 
uh, through that message and let them laugh and realize at the end, like, wow, we, we did an interview uh, with someone uh, a couple weeks ago and we explained this part. And they said, oh yeah, I actually think about every time I have a burger, I think about it differently because of that scene in your book. It, you know, it made me laugh so hard, but yeah, there were some messages behind it. And that's cool. It means we impacted somebody in a different way that they'll think differently when they're eating. You know, are they nourishing themselves or are they eating? You know, what are they placing their emphasis on? So uh, to us, that that's really cool because it means that we've accomplished, you know, what our goal is. That's awesome. I, I actually had a similar kind of uh, transformational experience since meeting you. I think we've talked quite a few times um, over the past, you know, year. And for me, I used to be extremely obsessed with my, you know, physical appearance. I was an ultra marathoner, you know, I ran all the time. Um, but then I had my, you know, I have a two year old now, but over the past year, he's been like, you know, going through not sleeping and all that. And it's just been such a drain on me, you know, to get out and work out. And, you know, I felt myself in a little way when I go out for runs. I'm like, it's not as fun as it used to be. And then I realized I was like, I would wake up and I felt this like compulsion, like I have to go, I have to go. I'm gonna like I'm I can't get unhealthy, you know. I can't be sitting like I need to. I need to make sure I look good. Um, and then I realized, you know, I was like, is that making me happy? I think it was after like one of our conversations. I know I, I was thinking about that. I was like, is do I really like running, or did I like that I was good at it and I liked winning? And I liked that, you know, I could eat whatever I want, but if I burned enough calories, I would still look good. Um, and I realized, you know, I don't enjoy running. I enjoy <laughs> cycling, you know? So, like, I have been, um, now I work out, like, whenever, you know, I wake up and I have enough energy and I go for bike rides. And sometimes I'll get off my bike and I'll go for a short jog, um, you know? And But, yeah, it's not this compulsion anymore. So, I think I... I Oh, a thanks to you for helping me find that fitness as well. Oh, wow. oh that's awesome. Thanks that for is, sharing that. That's huge. Yeah. yeah. That's like a complete uh, shift in your life. What was that? That's like a complete shift in your life. Just yeah. from like yeah. having awareness. You know, somebody saying something that makes you like rethink it. And then it changes your whole trajectory. So yeah, that's I very think I think it was those things. Uh, what was it that you say, Jeff? That uh, you said it earlier on the your thoughts or uh, thoughts or something you do. I, I don't remember what you just said. <laughs> I can't remember it. Your, uh, your thoughts, you know, your thoughts create the reality. Uh, it, it's you know the in, it goes from the invisible to the physical. What you're thinking uh, dictates how you're feeling and uh, how that shows up in your body, whether good or or not good. And what you're thinking also dictates on what you're going to do. So you you were focused always on uh, that aspect of the running because it's going to produce a specific result that that's what you were going for, even though you realize that you may not even enjoy that. Um, yeah. So it, it's really the the thoughts you put towards it, you know, will change the whole way that you're going to experience that situation. Yeah. Well, so I'm also interested. Are you guys, I know you had a big move, right? Are you still in Mexico? We are still in Mexico. Yeah. Okay. Where, where about are you guys? We are uh, in Ixtapa, which is about uh, 10 minutes outside of Zuatanego. Okay. And is how it? has that experience been going? For those who didn't see the earlier episode, I met Jeff and Mindy when they were living in Canada. So that's a big difference. So how, how has it been for you guys? <laughs> uh, it's a big difference. Uh, you know, we've always wanted to live like on a, in a coastal town, you know, uh, and that's what this is here. Uh, the environment is, is really nice. It's, it's hot every day, like really hot. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's just a different lifestyle. It, it's not the same. It's more slowed down. It's... Uh, I'd say it's more freeing, if that means what I'm trying to make it mean. Like, what do you think, Lynn? Um, Well, I think that uh, being in Mexico, yeah, it kind of like slows you down. And it also, on the creative side, it allows you to kind of collect your thoughts or download it differently. You can like think of things out on the beach. You can, you've got like different sorts of nature here than we had back home. 
back um, when we were in Canada, we used to hang out in the forest all the time. And that was such a great place to get inspiration, to have downloads, to just become creative. And then go, Jeff would go back and write. And like, it was, um, it's a really good way to increase your vibration, help you feel better. The nature here is completely different, but our pace in um, how we're living our life, just not being in Canada has also slowed down. So it's, it's a cool balance of how um, we're able to be creative here differently than how we were in Canada. That's awesome. Yeah, we spent a good two months, no, two plus months in Oaxaca. And I was hoping to stop by to see you guys as we went down through Acapulco, but we weren't able to make it up. So maybe next time we're going to be heading back down again soon. Um, but I'm curious with your uh, kind of your fitness movement and all the other things you do. Have you found the ability to implement that where you are now? Yeah. So we, we aligned with, uh, for so for years, we've been looking for uh, people and products and educational uh, things and philosophies to align with. And we came down here and we have, uh, we aligned with someone uh, uh, named Dr. Daryl Wolf, and he has a whole world healing and training program. So there are things that happen here in Estapa, Mexico, and there's an entire world tour that's really of uh, seminars and courses and intensive weekends and, and week-long sessions, helping people discover how to self-love, you know, what that really means. Uh, and self-love then uh, continues into how to self-heal. So with our Rethink Fitness, we've created uh, different programming uh, for people to take different courses and certifications so that they can learn the things that will allow them to be happy. And for those that are in the fitness world who are uh, personal trainers so that they can up-level their education and they can become a new world personal trainer and learn the things that can help them help their clients better navigate life. Now, do y'all do everything kind of virtually or do people have to come down to Extapa to do this stuff or how does that work? It, it's a combination of both. Uh, okay. People can do it virtually. In fact, we have a whole new uh, platform launching. It's, a, it's its own app that's all really driven through action steps and people's ability to do different things that are going to make them feel better so that they can have a perfect day, so that they can uh, feel better uh, in all aspects of their life and then get recognition and get rewards and be able to inspire other people. So that app is really the, uh, a tremendously large online directory of everything about self-help, self-love, self-growth, wellness, comedy, laughter, imagination. Uh, so it's a place where people can go and learn, uh, can play, and just enga get engaged in the community overall. That's awesome. I'll make sure to include all those links down below so people can check that out. Um, have you had a lot of, what about with the culture down there, the local culture? Have people really gravitated toward you or is it more just, you know, tourist or how's, how's that been? You know, where we live is a small uh, coastal town. And uh, this area is really, uh, I guess it's set up for tourism. Right, so uh, a, a lot of people speak English, you know, not, not fluent English, so uh, it's broken English conversations we're having, but it, it still is a, a way to engage with, with, the lo with people here locally. Uh, we found a lot of people who uh, are either from, you know, Australia or the UK or from Canada and the US that we've connected with. And we've connected with a lot of people who are local here. Uh, we found, on, on the majority, people are really friendly. They're uh, really nice uh, and uh, very welcoming. That's awesome. Have you taken any um, kind of, I'm trying to figure out how to word, word it. Um, have you been informed at all by any cultural practices that have kind of maybe altered the way you, you know, for you provide this fitness stuff I, I mean the way well, i'm having trouble putting it into words but what i'm thinking when i was in oaxaca we went and saw curandera and they're teaching us about you know uh traditional practices and stuff that we had never done before um and healing and fitness and i thought it was really fascinating 
I'm just curious if you've had any kind of meshing of, you know, different practices. Uh, the, the meshing that we had is uh, doing a, having a lot more focus on uh, your, what you can do with your own body. That's not just confined to going indoors into a gym. You know, we're in an outdoor environment and most people, no matter where you are in the world, even in the winter, you know, in cold places, you can do things that are just uh, body work types of exercises that can help you along the way. Different types of squats that help to open up the body from top to bottom, different types of stretches, different types of things. So in that way, we've incorporated that. Um, and we've always believed in, you know, doing as much as you can do outside. Maybe talked about in Canada, we love staying in the forest. Well, the forest is hiking. The forest is mountain climbing. The forest is cycling through, you know, those different areas. Uh, so it's being fit doesn't just mean I went to the gym for an hour three times a week. It's what are you doing in all those other times? In the gym, yeah, you could use very specific equipment. And if you go in with specificity for that, then yeah, you can get that accomplished. But what can you do if you can't go to the gym? What can you do in the outdoor environment? So, uh, you know, going down to the beach or going in the ocean, going for a swim. Uh, you know, the other day we were swimming and there was a bit of a current, not much. And it took us maybe the distance that would take five minutes to walk. It took about 40 minutes to swim. But I was saying to Mindy, it's like we're in our own wave pool, like your own wave swimming pool. Like that's a workout. You know, yeah. people think of just going to the beach. Well, you can go to the beach and you can make more of it. You can sit on the shore and you can do a sand scrub. You can get all those amazing minerals and nutrients from the ocean and scrub it into your body with the sand. It does so much goodness for your skin and, and everything else. And then go in the water. And instead of just going in the water and playing in the waves, well, why don't you swim a little bit? Because if you do it right, you may only stay in the same spot <laughs> and just keep swimming. But you have the ocean <laughs> act as that wave pool thing. So it's, it's how do you use nature to make uh, your workouts, to make your lifestyle uh, more... Uh, athletic and more all-encompassing. Okay, so you were not proponents of just picking up Ridiculous Adventures of Serbanan and going and sitting on a stationary bike for hours. Well, <laughs> I would say if someone wants to read the book that way, awesome. <laughs> but you know, even at the way that most people work out, our bodies are designed uh, to do uh, like an extreme uh, movement, like uh, a sprint or a run for a very short period of time. When you do those type of workouts where people are, are lasting for a lot longer period, you've got to then start to see, well, how do I compensate that in my body? If I'm putting all that additional stress on my body, well, am I balancing that out by properly nourishing myself, by properly hydrating, by properly putting in foods and nutraceuticals or supplements that are high vibrational so it's always a matter of, of balance it's not just hey i'm going to go full steam uh, power on the bike or whatever you're doing in the gym uh you, you've got to balance that out now if you're reading the book awesome <laughs> but it, it's all about uh i think it's it's not even balance it's harmony you know, okay. complete balance really means zero motion, zero movement, if everything was complete balance. Harmony is how you're taking everything in your life in all areas, you know, from the physical and the mental and the emotional and putting it all together so that you are feeling your best. I love that. That's awesome. Well, we are running out of time today. So I want, before we run out, um, can you let us know where we can find you guys and uh, where to find your books? Awesome. Well, the best place to go would be our website, servanand.com. It's got interviews. It's got all these book trailers. It's got readings. Uh, it's got reviews. So you can find out more about it and you can get the books directly from there. Uh, the books are also on Audible uh, right now on Amazon, on Kindle, and Kindle Unlimited. Uh, so but the website direct everybody to the best best spot unless you're an Amazon person and that's where you need to go uh, or an Audible person and that's where you need to go. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining me. It's been a pleasure and I hope to have you back again soon. Mindy, it was wonderful to have you here. I know Jeff kind of took over the conversation, but I loved having you as well. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, well, what was that? 
I was just going to say, yeah, Jeff tends to do the talking and then I'll fill in if there's something that he missed. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the same dynamic as me and my wife. So she always has to pinch me and tell me to shut up if I'm talking too much. So, <laughs> but it was great having you guys and everyone out there listening. I urge you to check out the Ridic Ridiculous Adventures of Serban Ann. Uh, go check out all the links down below. If you like what you heard, click subscribe. we got a lot of authors and creators coming on this channel. Um, you can see Jeff's uh, previous episode, and hopefully they come back again soon. Uh, thanks for joining us. Read more and write mindfully.